The hardest part of doing this journey is not sleeping in my car. It's not trying to find showers or parking. It's like, it's hard to just... Hello lovers, welcome back to Travel Snacks. Today our journey takes us from West Palm Beach to Miami. In this episode, we get to go to Wynwood Walls, which is like this place with all these beautiful murals, which you'll get to see. I'm excited to show you like a lot of the murals that I saw. I also get to try some awesome Cuban food. And I have a bit of a breakdown in this video, so you'll have to stay tuned to like see my little emo mood later on. But let's jump right in. All right, so if you've been following along, you will know that I've been having a lot of trouble in West Palm Beach. And I woke up in the morning and I was just like, you know what, I'm over it. I was ready to move on to Miami because it was only like an hour and a half away. So I jumped on the road. I am happy to report that I did find one pair of shorts in a Target in West Palm Beach. So that's like my sleep shorts because it gets hot in this car at night. But I figured I'm gonna be in Florida for at least another week or two. So I should probably get one more pair of shorts and maybe some tank tops. So I immediately went into TJ Maxx. And when I got out of my car, the vibe was just immediate, like Miami vibes. Like the stores had music playing outside and it was like Cuban or Puerto Rican music and it was awesome. And when I went into the store, pretty much everybody had a very heavy accent or they were speaking in Spanish. Like even the people that were ringing up the clothes and stuff, they all pretty much spoke Spanish. Well, I didn't find any shorts, but after I got my couple tank tops, I wanted to check out the downtown Miami area because it's Miami. So I drove down there and I was really impressed. It, I was in awe of how beautiful the city was. I mean, the buildings like you see on TV were like all white with like the kind of blue sheen windows. It was very beachy and just typical Miami, but it was more beautiful than I expected. I kind of thought because it's a big city and it's Miami that it'd be kind of like some parts gross, some parts nice, but the whole downtown was beautiful. Driving down the street and seeing all the tall beautiful white buildings. It was really magnificent. Like I, I really enjoyed it. And then I noticed, I was like, wow, like they don't, I don't see any homeless people. I was like, okay, so they must have it under control. Like I wonder what programs they have out here. And like, wow, it's really impressive. Anyway, I drove for the whole like downtown area. And then I was able to find like a little hidden parking spot so I can go look at the water. And I just sat there for a little bit, taking some pictures. It was really nice. So my immediate experience with Miami right away was just a good one. I was like, okay, this is going to be a good time. And then I was like, okay, but before I get going in the Miami vibes, I need to find a parking space for sleeping later. And I need to sort out my mattress. This whole mattress issue has been a problem. First of all, I drove around and I found this kind of like it's area that had curbs, which if you know, in South Florida, they don't really have curbs. They have like grassy areas in front of people's houses and they park in their driveways and stuff. You can't stealth park. So I did find a neighborhood that had curbs. So I was like, all right. So I found a couple spots. The first spot I found was great. And then I looked over and then there was the cemetery on the other side of the street. And I was like, I'm not, no. So I drove around a little more and I found a decent spot. And so I dropped a pin on my Google maps and I was like, all right, cool. Now let me go deal with this mattress. So instead of exploring Miami, I'm over here dealing with this dang mattress again. I had a bright idea because this mattress, the problem is it seems that the holes, the little tiny holes develop around the seams. And so I was like, all right, I got your number mattress. I'm gonna get some patches and patch up all the seams so that even the holes that haven't developed yet won't get a chance. So I went to Joanne's Fabrics I went to the back and I found some vinyl and I just got a quarter yard. It was a dollar fifty and I found a free parking garage at the Dolphin Mall and I went to the very top where there's no covering and there's like a lot of space so that people wouldn't be in my way. And then I just cut a bunch of circles out of the vinyl and then I patched up all the holes. Now it took forever 
and then I let it sit for a long time so that the glue would dry and saw a beautiful sunset so it was really nice after all that I blew up the mattress again and I was like all right we're good to go like it seemed to be fine cool so I think my plan worked great so then I went and got some food and then I went to my parking spot and I got in the back seat and I laid down and I went to sleep or at least tried to and then like within an hour the feet part of the mattress was deflated again I'm sure you can imagine how disappointed and upset I was I cannot with this mattress all right don't disappoint me like my mattress has hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell and throw a like on it and we're almost to a thousand subscribers come on snacks family we can do it hit the subscribe I don't know what to do about this dumb mattress because I can order another mattress but this is the second mattress from that company. So I'm like, okay, don't order from that company. Oh, and PS, I sent a message to that company. I'm like, I don't know if I should order from you guys again. And they just sent like uh, this message on Instagram and it was like third time's a charm with like the like laughing emoji. I don't find that funny. It's not humorous. And then they just sent back a sad face emoji. I'm like, that's unprofessional. I can order another mattress, but it's like, there's one for like $60. I don't want to spend double the money if it's not gonna be a better mattress, you know what I'm saying? I have to deal with this mattress later because I need to go explore. So one of the fun things that I heard about was Wynwood Walls, which is this place with a lot of murals. And I love street art, I love murals and stuff like that. So I drove over to this area and like, I don't know, the way that I went, I was going through like some seriously like shady areas, like a lot of homeless, a lot of people just walking around. And then like you start getting closer to the Wynwood Walls center area. And P.S. in this like kind of ghetto-ish area, there's still a lot of beautiful artwork. It's, it's crazy. It's like there's a lot of beauty and then like a lot of sadness too. But then as you get to like the main Wynwood Walls, it just kind of changes and it becomes like a nicer area. So I was like, all right, let me try to get some free parking over here. But I didn't find any that was like right in there. So I found this parking space that's like pay by phone and then I got out and it was just really cool like there was a lot of people out it was a nice atmosphere I took a lot of pictures and videos and I just walked around a lot oh before I get to I want to give you a little history just a short little 30 to 60 second situation the Wynwood Walls was conceived by the renowned community revitalizer and placemaker the late Tony Goldman and it started in 2009 he was looking for something big to transform the warehouse district of Wynwood and he arrived at a simple idea Winwood's large stock of warehouse buildings, all with no windows, would be my giant canvas to bring to them the greatest street art ever seen in one place. That's how it got started. And I was impressed to find out that it covers, I wrote it down, 80,000 square feet of space. I mean, it's awesome. And they have like all these different artists that have painted and they're all different styles. So I'm gonna stop talking and then let you see some of these beautiful pieces of art. Okay, so after Wynwood Walls, I came back to reality and I was like, all right, I gotta deal with a parking space and the mattress. So I was like, let me try to go closer to 
the water. Maybe there's some nicer neighborhoods over there. Talking on the phone with my mom and she had a very smart idea. The idea was to use my backup mattress as the feet part and then my mattress that's here as the main mattress part. So I put that together and it worked and I was like, okay, this is getting better. And then as I was driving towards the water, I looked over and I saw a nice little neighborhood. So I drove around and there was like a lot of curbs and spaces that I could park and I was like, Thank you, Jesus. You know how sometimes you can feel good, but also that heavy mood just wants to persist and just hang over you? I don't know. Like, I just started to feel bad. The hardest part of doing this journey is not sleeping in my car. It's not trying to find showers or parking. It's like, it's hard to just keep going when things don't go right like it's hard when you're living at home but like when you're in a car it's like little things that break they add up so like I have a schedule to you know keep myself on pace like some days are filming some days are editing some days are exploring and some days are driving and or a combination and when something happens those things can take like hours to try to fix because everything on the road takes 10 times longer. I know that it's working. It's going to work tonight for sleeping. Um, but like just driving around and like seeing so many people. I'm really fortunate to like have a mattress, to, to have a car. There's people that are sleeping on the curb. Not even a curb because Florida doesn't have curb. They're sleeping on sidewalks. And it's just upsetting to see the discrepancy in the haves and the have nots. Like when I'm feeling bad, then I feel even worse for other people. <sighs> and also like I've been trying to eat better, but like t I'm gonna go get like a little Caesar's pizza and I'm gonna get a soda and I'm gonna get Cinnabon and like, I'm just gonna go sit in the parking lot and eat it. Like I'm over it. Like, I just need to, like, not think about every last detail. I'm super venting right now, so, like, I'll get over it. It's just tiring. So, got my hood on because I'm just, like, in, like, an emo mood right now. All right, so I did go to Little Caesars. I got my whole pizza, and I got a Sprite. So I got to the parking lot, I opened the pizza box and I was like in my feelings eating the pizza and like I ate one slice and I was already starting to get full. I started to eat a second slice and barely got to the end of that and I was like wow like I really showed that pizza. Like I ate two slices and drank soda. I never even got to Cinnabon and then I think I was just like too over it and so I was like then I felt even worse because I'm like now I'm wasting pizza. So I would like put it on top of like a trash can so hopefully somebody found it and like got a whole pizza <sighs> after that I just prayed and I was like all right you need to calm down like relax I went to sleep and it was really really nice and my mattress worked great and I had a good night's sleep and then I felt so refreshed in the morning and I went over to Planet Fitness to get my shower and so I was like you know what I really want to get some Cuban food before I leave Miami and it was literally around the corner from the Planet Fitness I was at, like walking, just like around the little corner. And so I was like, yes. So I went in and pretty much everybody just spoke Spanish. Like I literally felt like I was in South America again. And so she just like was like, hold on a second. And then this guy came in and she knew him. So she spoke Spanish to him. And then he said, I speak English too. So let me help you. And it was so nice. So he walked me over to the pastry case and he's like okay this is this this is this this one's filled with meat this one's filled with you know fruit or whatever and so I ended up getting the guava and cheese and banana type pastry and the coffee and I went and sat down and then they brought it out to me and it was so good and it was such a great way to start the morning because now I'm headed to the Florida Keys so I'll talk about that in my next video because something miraculous and awesome happens in the Florida Keys. So you'll have to stay tuned.